In this video, I'm going to be going over a brief overview of what clinical informatics is. This video is really directed towards medical students who might be possibly interested in the field, but really could be watched by anybody who wants a basic idea of what clinical informatics is. So clinical informatics, combining technology and medicine in the digital era. What is clinical informatics? Clinical informatics is basically asking how can we use all the information systems that we have at our fingertips now and technology in order to improve healthcare? To put it another way, how can we integrate technology in our medical system better in order to achieve things like lower cost, greater efficiency, and better clinical decisions? Ultimately, this will all lead to the most important thing, which is improved patient outcomes. So here, uh, graphically, we can see how can we take our brain, add technology to it, and get super brain technology mode. So what the heck is an information system? I mentioned it before. Well, EMRs are a type of information system, and I'm sure we've all worked with an electronic medical record at this point. They've really changed the landscape of how we practice medicine. Now we have so much data and information at our fingertips, we can access every single little detail about a patient with just a few clicks. At the same time, however, EMRs have been associated with a lot of growing pains, and there's been an adjustment period, especially for people to figure out how to use them effectively so the EMR is not hindering their efficiency, but rather enhancing their abilities to provide the best care possible. So what are some problems with EMRs? I think one big one that you hear all the time is that EMRs are extremely time consuming, especially for people, I mean, there's people who are very fast with EMRs, but there's also people who aren't as fast. But the goal of clinical informatics is to make it so it's easy for everyone to save time with EMRs. Uh, we don't wanna have people continuing to take home uh, tons of notes that they had to finish. And we wanna make sure that things are user friendly and have great interfaces that are easy to understand so that everybody can be increasing their efficiency with EMRs. Another thing is that there can sometimes be documentation errors. I think we've all seen those patients that have had a UTI for 10 years, for example, or we've seen those funny transcription errors when people are uh, transcribing their notes. Um, you can Google them, actually. I, I found a lot of really funny ones, but it's not so funny when it actually impacts you know, a patient's care. It can be very serious, actually. Um, copy pasting notes is also very common, and a lot of times you get old information that's no longer valid. So we need to find ways to make sure documentation errors don't happen as frequently with EMRs. And finally, I found this nice graphic that says, I went into medicine to work with people and not to be a data entry clerk. And that's how some people feel like EMRs have made them at this point. They feel like it really has caused an interruption of the doctor-patient relationship. We've all learned how, you know, people are facing their screens up more and not really looking at the patient, and this is really causing problems uh, in terms of the doctor-patient relationship. So how can we make it so EMRs don't cause this kind of interference with the uh, doctor-patient relationship? Well, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. It's clinical informatics. So clinical informatics is here to save the day. And so some of the things that clinical informatics can do are, uh, I just listed a few examples here, but we can auto-populate notes. That'll speed up everybody's ability to finish their notes on time. We can reduce alert fatigue, and I'm gonna go into this in a lot more detail, uh, but there's a lot of alerts that can happen and sometimes people just get fatigued and uh, annoyed with them and stop paying attention to them. We gotta figure out how to optimize that. We can create user-friendly interfaces, like I said before, and we can reduce the total number of clicks. So it might not seem like a lot, but say you're clicking five times to, to do a certain order set, but uh, with optimizations, you can only click two times and you could do it. And that'll add up over time and you could save a lot of time by making an interface where a person does not have to click as much in order to accomplish the things they needed to get done. 
All of these changes, as I mentioned before, will increase efficiency and reduce excessive use of time. They will decrease medical documentation errors, and they'll also allow for more direct doctor and patient interaction because you're not spending as much time interacting with your EMR. But what about paper charting? I liked paper charting. It was so good. Well, no, we're not going to go back to paper charting. Go home, Nick Cage, you crazy person. So why is this exciting? So say we have Billy here. He's uh, a stellar third year medical student. He's got all honors in all of his classes and he wants to go into uh, his practice. So he goes into his practice and he's got his little EMR, his little computer right in front of him. And he's providing excellent care. There's also tons of other excellent providers and they're all treating patients to the best of their ability as well. Well, Sally here, Sally was like, hey, I think I want to try clinical informatics. I feel like I want to help a lot of people be able to help more patients. Basically, by going into clinical informatics, she feels like she can help a ton of patients indirectly, and she can help all the providers as well. So she works in clinical informatics. She does a fellowship, and she comes up with a bunch of improvements to the EMRs that these people are using. And it gets sent out to all of their epics, and oh, look, all their computers are happy now. And look, all of them got boosts to their efficiency, plus 35%, plus 20%, plus 25%. So indirectly, Sally, one person going into clinical informatics, has indirectly helped hundreds if not thousands of patients as well as hundreds of th or thousands of medical providers as well. So that's why clinical informatics I think is so exciting is because you can make some technology changes that can really impact a ton of people. So let me just go into this uh, one thing. I wanted to talk about alerts as I mentioned earlier. So I think you guys have all seen uh, sometimes when people put in an order you get this alert right here um, and it's like warning uh, do you sure you want to order this medication? Do you want to order this QT prolonging medication uh, when your patient has a long QT interval, blah, blah, blah. So these are called best practice advisories, and they provide clinical decision support. They also protect against medical mistakes, so they're very important. We need these alerts because you don't want to order the wrong type of medication that could potentially harm your patient, or you don't want to do uh, something that could harm a patient, basically. The problem is... Sometimes there's too many alerts and they can become fatiguing. A lot of times when I've seen people uh, looking at the alerts, they kind of just ignore it. They're just like, oh, like warning, oh, override, or oh, warning, cancel. Like They just basically ignore it because there's too many and they don't feel like they're useful. So the goal of clinical informatics here is to minimize the alerts and minimize the interference of people's workflow, but maximize the usability. Because again, these are important alerts if you can design them to be important and useful to the clinician. So here was an example uh, that I saw. Um, there was an organization that tracked the alerts that they had. They had 76,000 BPAs in a single day. 73% of them were ignored and only 27% of them caused the clinician to really do anything. So this is telling you like this is not an effective alert system. 73% being ignored means there's a ton of useless or not useful alerts and maybe there's some important alerts actually being ignored uh, because there's just so many alerts. So they made a lot of changes and uh, they tried to reduce the number of alerts in order to make it so only the really important alerts would get through. So you can see 80,000, 80,000, and they made some big changes in January in order to get it down to 20,000. And hopefully those are all the high yield alerts that are most important. And here's a lot of the things they, they did to change it. And this is all within the realm of clinical informatics. So before, if somebody had a contrast allergy, this is what the alert looked like. And this is how they redesigned it. So some of the things that they talked about, about this first alert not being good, is that it's just a bunch of text. It's not very eye-catching. And it doesn't have anything for the provider to do. It's just a bunch of text, and then there's no actions that can be taken. In the after one, uh, they've really added, you know, some big graphics in order to kind of catch your eye. And they've added different colors of the text to make it more, uh, to make it stand out more to the provider. And also they've given you actionable things that you can do in order to address this alert. And this is a way that it becomes more useful to the clinician and not more of a burden, burdensome pop-up where they just exit out of it right away because they don't want to deal with it. 
So another thing they did is they added a feedback section. And this was huge because now if they get feedback from all these people, they can figure out the best ways to make the alerts work for the providers rather than work against them. Uh, one of my favorite ones that I read here is, you cannot, ha you cannot have this pop up in the middle of appointments with patients. It's paperwork BS and does not help me with my job and stops clinical flow in its tracks. Stop doing this. So this is a great way that they can figure out how they can improve their alerts. So again, here's some statistics. Total BPA firings per month, there was like millions of alerts. And over time, clinical informatics was able to reduce the number of alerts to like, yeah, 64% decrease since September 2016. And what they noticed was the efficiency and effectiveness of these alerts, which was in the single digits before, was now like five or six times higher, uh, or even more. So it's like 22% efficient and 43% effective. And it got even higher through March. So clinical informatics was really a stepwise optimization of these alerts to make it useful for these providers and not a burden. So there's also a lot of other kinds of health informatics out there as well. There's bioinformatics. So we have all these people's genetic data now. People are doing 23andMe, they're doing all these genetic testing sites. How can we look at this, their genes and find optimal therapies for these people uh, based on informatics, being able to look at all this data? So one idea that I had was uh, with SSRIs, it takes like six weeks to know if this SSR SSRI is really going to be useful for someone's depression. But what if you could like look at everybody's uh, genes and kind of find genes that make certain SSRIs more effective in some people versus in other people. And then you could really have targeted therapy for these people. And there, like that's just my thing that I thought of, but like obviously the big thing here with everyone is, is cancer, is they're looking into how they can find targeted cancer therapies based on people's genetics. You have imaging informatics, so the goal is not to take over the radiologist's job, but to augment their ability to really identify certain things, to make things uh, easier for the radiologist. Uh, public health informatics. So we have so much data from all these patients. Now we can stratify certain populations that might be at higher risk for certain things. Like here, we have uh, lead poisoning risk analysis. So maybe we could target a specific screening test for patients that are coming from a certain zip code or something like that with public health informatics. And for me, what I think is most I exciting is research informatics. So uh, you could basically do a full chart review um, by doing some queries in your information system, the electronic medical record, and find tons of things. So you could search all patients who were treated with X drug in the past year and had Y result, and you could study which ones of them had a good a result or a bad result or whatever. So you could do a ton of research uh, with clinical informatics. And the key to all of these is big data. There is now an abundance of information at our disposal. It's just waiting for us to use clinical informatics to unlock that data for us to be able to interpret. So clinical informatics recently became a medical subspecialty. In October 2011, the American Board of Medical Specialties announced it as a new specialty. It's a two-year fellowship program. And, and in October 2013, the first ward exam was held. And I think it's very interesting. It's still a very flexible field. If you go into this, you can really use in clinical inf informatics as uh, however you choose to. So for example, my mentor who I was talking about, uh, talking with in preparation for this talk, uh, does four days of clinical informatics and one day of seeing patients. Uh, but you could do the exact opposite if you wanted. You could do four days of seeing patients and just one day of uh, clinical informatics. You could tailor it however you'd like to because it's still such a new and growing field. It's very exciting. And also, physicians are very valued on these teams. Uh, there's uh, tons of different specialties uh, and different professions that go into clinical informatics. Pharmacists, nurse, um, like engineers, everything. Uh, and you don't have to be someone who knows how to code or whatever in order to go into clinical informatics. 
really just having the perspective of, of a physician is huge. So the conclusion, medicine is becoming increasingly digital. There are still many growing pains, but clinical informatics is here. Its role is to optimize our ability to use this technology in order to decrease costs, increase efficiency, improve decisions, and ultimately patient outcomes. Uh, there is a new medical subspecialty for clinical informatics, and there are other branches to pursue as well, bioinformatics, the research informatics, the public health informatics, etc. And clinical informatics is truly exciting because it's a way that you can help thousands of patients and providers at once. Hope you guys learned something, so thanks again for listening, and see you guys next time.